Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to another video. In this video, we'll be looking at this problem that is called for sum. And I already made two videos uh, in the in the series of problems that is uh, two sum, three sum, and then this is for sum. So I would recommend you check out the other two videos first before proceeding with this one because the knowledge from those ones will help you understand this problem better. And if you've already done that, then we can jump right into the question. So the question just tells you that uh, we are given uh, n integers in an array and you have to find all the possible quadruplets uh, of integers distinct numbers from that array that add up to a given target so you have to choose like four elements a b c and d such that they sum up to a given integer target so the way we approached the problem in three sum was to fix one element which would essentially convert that problem into a two sum problem which is pretty easy to solve so we'll be following a similar approach in this video as well. So what we'll be doing is we'll be fixing one element, which will essentially convert our problem into a three-sum problem. And then we'll go ahead and solve that three-sum problem. And we'll uh, perform a few more modifications and optimizations along the way, which I'll cover on uh, as we go through the video, right? So be sure to check out the three-sum video first and then come back to this one so that this is a lot more easier to understand. Right, so the first is uh, the first thing that we'll do is simply check out the base condition if nums dot size is smaller than four, then we'll return uh, an empty array and uh, on that note, just, let's just initialize an array as well, a vector of vectors of integers. I'll name that res, and uh, yeah, that should be perfect. All right, so yeah, so we will return an empty array if the number of elements in the array is less than four, because then it is not possible to build a quadruplet, right? All right, so again, as we did earlier, we'll just sort this array because an n log n sorting would not really affect the uh, time usage because n log n plus n cubed or n to the power four would not really affect uh, the time complexity as much. So we'll just sort this array from the beginning to the end. Right, so now let's first uh, fix the first element. So we'll create a for loop for int i equal to zero while i is smaller than nums.size. And I should actually just store this into another variable int n equal to nums.size and just write n minus three plus plus i. Now, why did I do this uh, n minus three? Because we need to find a quadruplet. So we'll fix one element and then we need to have at least three elements remaining after that so that we can perform the three sum problem on those remaining elements. So that's why I'm only going till n, uh, uh, till smaller than n minus three, right? So now uh, we also know that we do not want any duplicate quadruplets. So we'll check if we have already uh, solved this problem for a duplicate value of i because then we'll get the same answers otherwise. So we'll just write if uh, nums of i is equal to equal to nums of i minus one because if the duplicates are to be there if there are any duplicate elements they'll appear together because we already sorted the array and this will just check for that and we also need to check uh, and take care of a boundary condition so we'll just check if i is greater than zero uh, and then we'll check this condition so that we don't get an error if that is the case we'll just continue on to the next iteration so once you've done that, uh, now you need to set check if it is actually possible to build uh, a solution at this current value of i, right? So you'll see what is the minimum uh, value that you, what is the minimum value uh, that you can actually achieve with this current value of i? What is the minimum sum of quadruplets that you can achieve with this current value of i? So you will get the minimum sum, which will basically be all the elements starting from the current position uh, till the next three elements because th this is a solid array. So the minimum value would be starting at the current element and just checking the next three elements. So we'll check if that sum, that minimum sum is greater than the target. If that is the case, we'll say that no more solutions exist because right now the minimum possible solution is greater than our target and going on further, find, uh, putting, putting the search further into the rest of the array would not really yield any proper results. So we'll just check that if nums of i plus nums of i plus one plus nums of i plus two and plus nums of i plus three. If this, this is which is the minimum sum, it turns out greater than the target, then we'll just break out of this loop, right? 
All right, so once you've done that, we are ready to start off with the next uh, three sum problem. Now we fixed the first element. So let's begin with, three, with the three sum problem. So we'll open up another loop and we'll say for int j equal to i plus one, while j is smaller than n minus two because we leave two elements for the two sum problem and just do plus plus j. Right, so once we've done that, uh, simply check if we are checking a duplicate value of j we just want to check that because again to avoid duplicate quadruplets we'll again write a similar condition to what we did here for the i so we'll simply write um if uh yeah if j is greater than i plus one so that we don't uh, overshoot the boundaries uh, j is greater than i plus one and uh, if j uh, nums of j equal to equal to nums of j minus one just checking if it is equal to the previous element and this will skip the first element because of this condition so it won't this condition won't run for the first element and it will start running for the uh, subsequent elements and keep checking for duplicates so if there's this is the case we'll just continue and uh, again as we did earlier we just want to check if uh, the minimum sum that we are building right now, if that is greater than the target, we'll simply skip, right? So if nums of j is nums of j, uh, nums of i plus nums of j plus nums of j plus 1 plus nums of j plus 2. This is the smallest possible sum with the current fixed elements i and j uh, if this is greater than the target we will simply say that we need to break out of the loop because then no other uh, condition is possible and while we write this we actually have another condition that we can check which will optimize this further we can say if the greatest possible sum with the current fixed elements if that greatest possible sum is smaller than the target then again, we will say that there is no use uh, looking at these, uh, looking at the current values, and we should actually move on ahead with the next iterations. So we'll just add that condition as well here. So here I'll just write if. Now I'll write the greatest sum that is possible for the for that earlier fixed value of i. So in the previous loop, I'll just add this nums of i plus nums of n minus one, which is the greatest element in the array because it's sorted, plus nums of n minus 2 which is the, the second largest element in the array plus nums of n minus 3 which will be the third largest element in the array if that is smaller than the target we need to check the other it uh, check the other options because we need to move i a little bit further so that we can get to larger sums so in this case we'll write continue so that we get to the next iteration and just to make some space i'll remove these extra spaces from here so that it stays on the screen for you to follow all uh, right like so yeah uh, and once you've done that we can do a similar thing here for j as well if nums of i plus nums of j the two elements that we fixed plus nums of n minus 1 plus nums of n minus 2 which will be the last two the two largest elements in the array along with the elements that we fixed if this turns out to be smaller than the target we know that it is not possible to get the solution now because the largest possible sum is turning out is falling shorter than the target so we need to move further into the array to get larger sums and we'll consider bigger values of j and i so we'll just write continue yeah that should be fine and with that we have all the base conditions checked right now we can start off and look for the last two elements we've solved uh, we've come to the three uh, we've solved the three sum problem so now we need to we fix the third sum and we now need to solve the two sum problem further on right so we'll set two uh, pointers a left pointer and a right pointer which will search the rest of the array for a match for our current target right so i'll just write int left equal to uh, j plus one and int right equal to uh, n minus 1 right uh, we're just setting them to the uh, ig, uh, exact right element of the jth index and the last element in the remaining array so we'll now perform a search in this space right 
So let's just start a for a while loop and we'll just write left while left is smaller than right because we don't want them to be equal at any point because we are looking for distinct elements. And once we are inside this loop, all we'll do is we'll just get the sum, the sum that we are currently getting with all the elements that we fixed, right? So I'll just write in sum equal to nums of i plus nums of j plus nums of left plus nums of right. Cool. So let's just check if this sum is equal to the target. If that is the case, we'll simply push all these numbers into the result vector, right? So we'll just write, if this is the case, we'll just write res.pushback. I'll create an array on the fly like this and just write nums of i, comma, nums of j, comma, nums of left, comma, nums of right. Cool. So yeah, that is done. And again, just to avoid duplicate values, what we'll do is we'll run a while loop so that till the point that the a uh, number pointed by the left keeps appearing again and again. We'll keep skipping those numbers so that we skip the duplicate quadruplets, right? So we'll move the left pointer until we reach the next unique element. And similarly, we'll move the right pointer towards the left until we need to reach the next unique element, just to avoid the quad duplicate quadruplets. So I'll just write y left is smaller than right, just to check the boundary conditions, and nums of left equal to equal to nums of left plus one, we'll just move the left pointer uh, towards the right. And similarly for while right is greater than left and uh, nums of right is equal to nums of right minus one because we are checking the element before right because here we are starting from the last element of the array. And if, uh, and if this is the case, if there are duplicate elements, we'll just do right minus minus. And if you look at this closely, you'll know that this will uh, move on, this uh, element, this array will move on till the last duplicate element. And you will end up at the last element, which is equal to the current left. So to just move one step ahead and one step back for left and right, respectively, we'll just do left plus plus and right minus minus in the end so that it comes to the, actually comes to the next unique element because this loop will only run till nums left equal to equal to nums left plus one. So it'll actually take it to the last duplicate element. So to uh, skip that, we'll just do left plus plus and right minus minus in the end, right? And uh, right, so this is the condition. If the sum turns out to be equal to the target, if the sum falls short, uh, then we'll just do else if sum is smaller than target, we, need, we know that we need to get larger elements. So we'll just move the left towards the left pointer towards the right, because this is, an, this is an ascending order sorted array. So elements to the right will be larger. So we'll move left to the right. And in case this is not the case, which means that sum was greater than the target, we'll uh, make the sum smaller by moving the right pointer towards the left. So we'll just do right minus minus. And that should be pretty much it. And if we are lucky, we should uh, get the result on the first try. So we'll just return result and let's just test this pro code out and let's see if it runs. Okay, so, okay, I just put uh, brackets there. I shouldn't have done that. And let's see. And gives us a correct answer. Let's submit that. Fingers crossed, and this should give us a correct result. 16 milliseconds, faster than 91.35%, and less memory usage than 82.65%, which is perfect. So yeah, this is the video, and uh, if you want to check out the other two videos in the series, the three sum and the two sum, which I recommend you do that do before you come to this problem, because then you'll understand this one better. So yeah, so if you like this video. Uh, hit the like button, uh, subscribe to the channel for more such content, and I will see you in the next video.